It's been five years since 2012 when I hit rock bottom. I was going through a lot of difficulties in my marriage and then I suffered the first episode of what would later be diagnosed as bipolar complex disorder. At rock bottom, I thought I was worthless. Yes, it's been five years, and I am a different woman now, a new creation. Through a lot of Bible reading and prayer, I came to know that I am not worthless. I am priceless. And the question whether I am worthless or priceless depends on what I know about myself and not what others think of me. I hold a PhD in being myself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am here to talk to you about something very beautiful that I call the priceless mentality. When I hit rock bottom, I was struggling to manage damaging relationships, damaging habits, and the stereotypes that come with being a black, African, married, career, woman. I have broken down what I am going to tell you into three stages in order to explain the process that I went through to save myself from myself. The three stages are just for explanatory purposes. They do not happen consecutively. In fact, you can take that they happen concurrently. The first stage is equipping myself. The second stage, searching for myself. And the third stage, living as myself. Now let me take you back a little to give you a picture of where I started off. Now I loved my mother dearly and I was very protective of her. But when I was an infant, my father separated me and my two brothers from our mother and shut her out of our lives completely. And then my mother suffered severe mental illness and lived in destitution for as long as I was growing up. So man, when I was diagnosed with a mental condition, I was terrified. I thought my life would take the same turn as my mother's. When I suffered that first episode, I found myself in a hospital, shouting at the doctors and other patients, telling them about my husband's infidelity and asking them to tell that man to say sorry for what he had done to me. The response I got was that I was tranquilized. The next morning when I woke up, the first person for me to see was the same psychiatrist I had hired to treat my mother sitting there, coming to treat me. That was an aha moment for me. But I am very thankful for the example my mother set for me. Oh my God, I was not going to give up and I was not going to give in. I was going to fight to make sure that my family history did not repeat itself. 
I told myself, the same power that I had used to create this hellhole that I now was in is the very same power that I will use to destroy this hellhole and build for myself a sane heaven. I'm also thankful for all the years of practicing law that I had under my belt. At the time, I, I had practiced for about 15 years. And lawyers' jobs are to look at information, lots of information, organize it, put it together, and come up with a sure solution. And so I had that gift. So that's where I started. So now let's move on to the three stages. Equipping myself, searching for myself, and living as myself. Equipping myself involved developing tools that would help me. I came up with different words that people use every day, but I defined them for myself in a way that I would be able to understand them easily. Now, as you can imagine, the most important tool for me was sanity. Now, sanity, I defined as the ability to tell the difference between the truth and a lie. I knew that the biggest hurdle I was going to face in what I was trying to do were all the lies that I had been telling myself for all the 38 years that I had been alive. How would I get rid of those lies? How would I even identify them? So what I did was I exercised something very basic, which is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so I stopped lying to other people. And when I did that, I realized that, in fact, if I'm not lying to others, then I would not lie to myself. I insisted that I would speak the truth, no matter how embarrassing, shameful, complicated, or scary I told myself the truth would be. Now, those tools for me began to give me a lot of clarity in my mind. And I felt free. I felt that all the burdens were letting go of me. Now, let's move on to the next stage, which was searching for myself. I believe the reason why I thought I was worthless is because there were events in my life that I had interpreted in such a way that I convinced myself that I was worthless. Now, using the same example as my mother, for my mother, my father was an extremely generous man. He was. He helped so many people. But he never lifted a finger to help my mother. The message that gave me was that he really did not love me. Because if he did, then he would have helped her for my sake. So then I told myself, I'm not wanted and I'm not loved. And so I'm worthless. So to get myself from feeling that way or thinking that way, I started to analyze the direction that kind of thinking was taking me in. And what I came to see is that there were so many things in that narrative alone that were pretending to be my destiny, but they were not. For instance, it was not my destiny to protect my mother. And it was not my destiny to end up like her. It also was not my destiny 
to understand my father or to be loved by him. So I needed to define my destiny, to get away from all these things that were giving me obligations that I really did not have to carry. So I thought, wow, my destiny must be so complicated. It must be full of heroic actions by somebody, maybe lots of romance, maybe a lot of news coverage. But I decided, no, I was going to simplify it to my level where I could understand it and be able to feel that I was walking the path of my destiny. So I told myself that my destiny is simply to discover something new about myself every day and to share that, what I learn, with others using my God-given talents. And that is how I got free from those things that were pretending to be my destiny. And that takes us to the third stage, which is living as myself. So to live as myself was quite simple. I just thought I'd pick out things that I know I enjoy doing and exploit them. Now the first thing I exploited was my talent of writing. I am a good writer. So when I left my husband, I sat down and I wrote a blog called Highway to Heaven, and I talked about all the abuse I went through in my marriage. I told the whole world about it. And from there, the people daily approached me and they asked me, would I write for them personal stories about what's going on in my life? And I gladly agreed. And so I've been writing for them, and they publish my column every Monday. Another thing I knew is that I'm, I'm a very giving person, very kind, very generous. But I believe that kindness and generosi generosity can be misused. And so in order to direct myself in the right path, I established a charity. I called it Mary's Manger after my mother. My mother was called Mary. It's located where she lived and died, which is also where I was born. Now Mary's Manger is for helping women who are going through abuse in their marriages. It put me in a position where I could now say that I'm no longer in need of help because I can reach out to others and give them some help. And that's how I got out of that hellhole and brought myself to sanity. It's been five years. I'm running a thriving law firm. I'm raising three wonderful children. I'm taking care of myself. I'm running my charity. And all that with something called bipolar complex disorder, which I have since forgotten. So I'm very glad that I managed to do that. Now the primary difference between a worthless mentality and a priceless mentality is that when I was living a worthless mentality, I was living the life that I thought I was meant to live. But when I live the priceless mentality, I am living the life that I know I am meant to live. Thank you. <laughs>